Hello and welcome to this presentation on Initiating Change. Thank you for taking the time to be with us today. If you have clicked on this video, it is highly likely that you wish to begin or continue to make positive lifestyle changes to improve your physical and mental well-being, reduce your pain and improve your function. This is the second video put together by Cum Taf Morganog NHL's Health Board and a series of videos educating people about pain and lifestyle changes. If you haven't had the chance to watch the previous video about explaining pain, we highly recommend you watch that video as the following information follows on. Reasons to change and desired outcomes are individual for everyone. In order to make change, we need to gain an understanding of new concepts and adopt a structured approach. This video consists of information highlighting positive upward progress cycles, goal setting, pacing and barriers to change. With the aim of introducing holistic approaches to empower you to self-manage your condition and improve your physical fitness. When we start understanding our pain, what causes it to persist? What aggravates and eases it? What things we can do to control it? We feel more in control. When we feel more in control, we can start moving more, gradually increasing our strength and confidence. Thus, our activity levels increase, and in the meantime, our pain and sensitivity reduces. Now that we understand the nature of persistent pain, what drivers cause it to persist, and what we can do about it, we need to ask ourselves, where do we begin? First of all, we need to recognise what is important to us, what our values are, what are our ambitions, and how are our current pain levels holding us back from where we want to be? We need to establish a goal. Once again, goals are very individual for you and can vary from wanting to be able to walk the dog further with reduced pain, be able to play with your grandchildren at the park, or even reduce your anxiety levels. In order to be able to keep track of our progress towards our decided goal, it is often useful to follow a structured approach. Using a process such as setting SMART goals can keep us on track. SMART goals are specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and time orientated. A good example of a SMART goal would be to be able to walk the dog for 15 minutes two times per day around the park in three months. Goals need to be based on your needs and abilities. Try not to set too many goals too soon. Evaluate the goals at set intervals. Specific goals lead to better improvements over general or vague goals or no goals at all. Most people will wish to be active and busy. The question is, how do we start introducing exercise into our daily routine? This can appear daunting at first and appear to be a bit of trial and error, with people occasionally biting off more than they can chew initially. People will report that when they have a good day, they will attempt to catch up on household chores or play with their, their grandchildren more and generally increase their activity levels. As a result, they end up doing more and they experience an increase in pain. Take this graph for example. On a good day, this person's activity levels increase. As a result, their sensitivity increases. They need to take their pain relief and rest for a while to allow the sensitivity to reduce. This may take a couple of hours. It may take a day or two, or even a week, depending on how much activity has been done or how sensitive the tissues are. Unfortunately, during this period of rest, this person's muscles aren't being used as efficiently or effectively. They lose muscle strength, their joints become that little bit stiffer, and their endurance reduces. The person has another good day, tries to do a bit more activity, but cannot do as much as their previous good day because their muscles aren't as strong or aren't as conditioned. Over a period of time between bouts of increased activity and rest, their overall activity levels have reduced and their pain sensitivity is, has increased. This is known as the boom and bust cycle. This may be a cycle that you have found yourself in. Managing our activity levels this way isn't helpful when we have a pain problem as it reinforces the link between activity and pain and leads to us avoiding more and more. To manage or control our activity levels, we need to identify a way of measuring them. We need to introduce a concept called pacing. 
In order to remove ourselves from the unhelpful boom and bust cycle, we need to make a change. We need to learn to control the situation. We need to introduce the concept of pacing. Pacing is a systematic approach to change in our activity, whether that is to gradually build on what we can comfortably achieve or to limit overactivity. Pacing involves regulating your exercise and daily activity so as not to flare up your pain and to gradually increase what you're able to do. Pacing means doing activity, whether it is a good day or a bad day, ultimately doing 50% on a good day and 50% on a bad day. Don't do more on a good day. Pacing helps you to become more active, fitter and healthier. Pacing is about choosing when to take a break from activity before pain, tiredness or other symptoms become too much. In other words, not carrying on until pain forces you to stop. Do not use pain as the only guide on what to do or not to do. As we've mentioned previously, our pain levels can be unpredictable. When we know we can measure our activity, we gain control over our sensitivity. In order to control our activity and therefore our sensitivity, We need to be able to measure our levels of activity. To do this, we can time how long we are undertaking activity for. We can measure the distance we walk. We can count how many repetitions of an exercise we do. Or we can calculate how much weight we are lifting. This graph shows how pacing works. On the left, we start our activity level at a lower level. We need to calculate what that level is for us, which we will cover shortly. As you can see, over a period of time, having kept the activity levels stable and consistent, our muscles have adapted and grown stronger, our endurance improves. As a result, we can make a small increase in our activity levels and sustain this level for a while. This may be a couple of days, it may be a few weeks, or even possibly a few months. It all depends on how sensitive and protective our nervous system is. The important thing is, is that we keep our eyes on our goal. We are in control of our pain, rather than our pain being in control of us. A common question is, how do I know where to start? An example could be that my goal is to increase my walking distance. I could use time as a way of measuring this. For my first walk, I could walk for 10 minutes. I'm having a good day. The next day, I'd walk for 20 minutes. I'm having a better day. The third day, I only managed to walk for 6 minutes as I'm not having such a good day. If we add these times together, it totals 36 minutes over three days. Now we need to divide that total by three, as we've taken it over three days, to find our average. In this case, it's 12 minutes. Our baseline would be set just prior to this, 11 minutes. In this example, we would start our activity at 11 minutes and walk this duration consistently day after day, thus not having long periods of rest. Only increasing the duration when our activity levels have stabilised and our sensitivity is better controlled. To put this into practice, it is often better to consider the following things. Stabilise your routine. Break up activity with periods of rest. Do something every day. Prioritise. I must do that today. I could do that in a few days' time. Do tasks in different positions. For example, you could do some of your ironing in standing and some in sitting, or you could chop vegetables in sitting. Have confidence in your own ability and learn to use an activity diary. Keeping a record of your activity levels and how they make you feel in an activity journal can help recognise patterns in your activity levels. Have you been overdoing it? are not doing enough in some cases. We need to recognise that there may be barriers in the way of us making a change. Some of these can be changed easily. Others may take a little longer to change. The important thing is that we concentrate on what is in our control. Discuss with your family, health professional or employer what barriers could have a negative influence on progress and jointly construct an action plan to overcome these. Unfortunately, flare-ups can occur with ongoing chronic conditions. Developing a setback plan is good pain self-management. Important principles to remember if you experience a flare-up 
are to carry on, maybe at a more gentle level, but doing some activity is better than not doing any activity at all. Review your baseline. Do you need to take a step back and recalculate? Review your current medication. Discuss with your doctor if it could be appropriate to change your medication or increase your current medication. Set goals. Allow more personal and relaxation time and identify any triggers such as stress. Thank you for taking the time to listen and good luck with your onward journey. Remember, we can gain control over our sensitivity.